Hello, Bumpy McSquiggums here, and welcome to my Let's Play of The Last Federation by Arkham Games. It's a game that I've been dreading doing, not because it's not fun, not because I don't enjoy it. I actually do. I like the game quite a bit, but I'm not very good with it. I'm actually quite terrible at the game, and beyond what I'm normally bad at a game, this is like... I don't know. I don't know. It's not a game I can really describe 100%. It's something you guys are just going to have to see for yourself, but if you'd like to control every aspect of everything ever in any kind of game, <clears throat> this is kind of how you do it in this game. This is all about just doing everything you can possibly do. It's it's quite scary. Alright, so want to tweak how you start off? Here you go. However, it's your first time playing. We strongly advise you using Quick Start instead. I've gone through most of the Quick Start, which is basically a tutorialized to a degree it gives you a lot of good pointers and hints and starters and everything else at the very beginning of the game and then after that you eventually get to the point where you can no longer uh, it no longer starts telling you what's going on so we're gonna start off I guess on zero year everything's gonna be on normal I'm I'd like to do Iron Man but again I'm always paranoid to do that in case I lose footage I can't regain it for you guys so I'm not gonna do Iron Man but I will leave all my horrible horrible decisions mistakes and terrible choices in the game for you guys. Um, I don't know what observer mode is. I'm sorry, I will look over these different things, guys. Uh, no, no. Skip uh, intro story, skip tutorial, and enable all gameplay mechanics from start. Sure. Disable RCI. What is RCI? This makes for a quite simpler game in a lot of respects. Oops, excuse me. By removing RCI values from the factor at all times, this does not always mean an easier game, it just means simpler. No, we'll, we'll keep everything in there. Extra Dangerous Alliance. Members of hostile alliances will never leave their alliances due to low attitude toward other members. No, that's fine. Alright, we're going to go with this. And if your ship dies, that's it, you're dead. If you are not playing Iron Man mode, you can still reload older saves, of course. I might do perma... No, I'm not going to do permadeath this time, guys. Once I get to the point where I'm comfortable with the game, I would actually do that. But right now, I'm very uncomfortable playing the game. So, here we go. We're going to read through this. I am the last of the murdered race of Hydrals. My countrymen were the dictators of the solar system. So, we kind of had it coming. Yes, that is me above. And you? You are me. This is our story. I was the sole survivor thanks to a renegade mission I undertook, betraying my race to bring spacefaring technology to our potential rivals. My ultimate goal, the creation of a peaceful, unified federation of planets. Only then can we be saved from the kinds of atrocities my race committed, and the kinds that were committed against us. Naturally, upon my crash landing at this planet, I was placed in captivity. Having no concept of my strength, they did not realize that I was merely waiting. I waited for years. Stardate. First one proto 3000. My dream of a universal federation is as alive as ever, and now the Andors have finally gotten themselves into orbit. After spending so much time with me as a peaceful captive, they were ill-prepared for my escape. I have commandeered the first prototype suppressor, sure, and now the Andors are in hot pursuit. The Andors are about the best enemy to have, all in all. They aren't above violence, but I don't think they have any desire to ever spread off their utopian homeworld. Their disapproval means that I will find it difficult to get favors from them in the future, however. Here they come. I outclass this force so severely that it will be almost impossible to lose. So now is a good time to put my ship through its paces. But I still have to be careful. If they manage to take out my ship, I will be just as dead now as later. Alright, so this game is broken up into probably several parts, but we'll say two main parts. Basically, you'll have the galaxy map, which is pretty limited. You have several planets that you see, and they're always kind of in the same area, and they're controlled by, I believe, the same people every time. But your relationship with these different people. This is really a game more about diplomacy and getting people to do what you want as opposed to direct combat. The other part of the game is the combat phase. The combat phase is turn-based, and it is, I don't know, it's quite fun. So we have to destroy all flagships, three remain on remaining or dock with a survey platform. Well, I don't feel like docking with a platform. I would much rather slaughter the enemy. So let's take a look. So this is how much we can move and we can control our different movement and everything else by these little blips over here. 
So this is our shield, the middle one. The one in the front is our weapons, and the one on the right is our engines. So if we decide to take everything out of the shields, except for one, we can put it all into engines. And now if you look, our little line here, which I can't really point at, but our line right there actually can go much further because we have more allocated to engines. But right now, that's not what I want. So, instead I will sneeze and try to mute it in time so you guys don't go, oh my gosh, my ears just ruptured. But we're going to go with the balance thing. So you can move to a certain point. You can also, I think, hit control. Maybe that's wrong. No, it looks like that might not be wrong. All right. Hmm. Is it shift? That's shift. You can hit shift to uh, turn yourself in the combat. So you have quite a bit of control over that. Then you have all these other things that you can do. You can use uh, these different operations, which gives you stunner. It stuns and destroys all incoming shots. All your stuff destroys all incoming shots. You have ejected garbage. Destroys incoming shots. Um, quick cover, basically. Cloaking field, you can cloak. I mean, each time you play, you're going to have different stats and things that you can do. So, but for right now, we're going to do a movement. And then you have these three weapons, and you always have these th three weapons. You have your minigun, you have your armor-piercing bullets, and then you have your gravity lance. Armor-piercing is generally for, I want to say, for shields. Maybe you don't always have these three. This actually seems like I'm... I don't have the shield weapon this time. Hmm. Normally I had a minigun, I had a... like a laser turret. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Let's take a look here. So the minigun is actually going to be the best thing to use on these ships. And it tells you down here in the bottom left, you have to take a look. I hover over, it says the first for our DPS is the minigun, followed by the armor piercing, and finally the gravity lance. So we're going to move toward this, and we're going to not auto fire, but select a ship to target, and we're going to target it. Apparently, I'm firing out some sort of missiles too. So this is actually quite a bit different from my last playthrough. Already, it seems quite a bit different. Alright, now we've gotten through a shield, I think. No, a shield is still there, it's almost gone though. I'm going to go this way, and I'm going to continue to fire on him. Hopefully everything pans out. We're not getting through a shield very quickly, simply because we don't have the, the normal shield-destroying type thing. So, eh, it's fine. We'll continue to blast through it. It should be still a relatively easy fight. All right, we've done some damage to this hull. We have gotten through a shield. Now we can switch to the gravity lance. The gravity lance should make pretty quick work of him, so we're going to do that. And that is this one right here, and we're going to click on him, and boom, down he goes immediately. And now we're going to go and target this guy, but we're going to switch over to our minigun again. And we're going to start playing into his shields as well. Hopefully, relatively soon, we get through it. And I think one more little blip should get through. Yeah, it's weird that we don't have a shield. Uh... Yeah, there he goes. He is down. All we have to do is finish him off with the gravity lance, so we'll do that. And there we go, he's down. Now it's finally the final flagship before we are done. And we'll land him. Let's use one of these abilities. So divert power to shields, the cloaking field, what is this? Operation Raptor. Uh, okay, well we'll do this. So basically it destroys anything coming at us and it it deploys all those ships and the other operations as well. It deploys other ships as well. All this will help us actually deal with the other things floating around. The ships have a mind of their own. They'll go and do whatever they want to do. You don't really get to control them. All you can really control is your main ship. Now this little thing that shows up here that looks like I'm like getting tractor beamed in, it, I'm actually docking with the station right now. So that is why that's there. Basically, all you have to do is sit still for like four or five turns or like float around it, orbit it a little bit, and you'll actually dock with it. And there we go. So simple, easy victory. They, he said that you outclassed him quite a bit. It is weird seeing the different weapons, but that's okay. I don't hate it. It adds a little bit of variety to it. So we're going to end our combat there. And this happens every time. Anytime you do a contract or any kind of mission or anything, and you have to do the combat itself, you'll see this as what happened. The Andor has lost 10 base power, blah, 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 all this other stuff. 
Um, you used your interceptor missiles this many times, and your different operations. Basically, just a rundown of everything that went down on that thing. And our influence dropped by two points from the Andors. So we'll close that up. And here we are. This is the galaxy. Right now, we don't know anything about the galaxy except what people are on the galaxy. So right here, it's the Burlusts. We have the Andors. We have the Evix, or the Evux, if you will. We have the Hari on the Thraxian homeworld. Sorry, the Thraxians. Hari is the Thraxian homeworld. We have the Acutians. We have the Skylaxians. We have the Boranes, and I think we skipped these guys. Yes, the Palatians as well. So those are the people that we are dealing with, and it looks like the Andor actually have two different... Oh, sorry, they have they have their one planet here, which is their homeworld, and this is our destroyed homeworld, the Remnants, and it's controlled by the Andor right now. So, this is pretty much what you're going to be doing most of your time. It's it's weird. Alright, so we have some quests and stuff that will pop up in the top right. And it's hard to explain everything there is to explain about this game because there's so much here. This game has a lot to do. So if you're really into micromanaging every little detail, this is going to be a game you will absolutely love, love, love. I personally prefer to go in and just murder stuff, so for me it's a little bit challenging for me to play a game like this. Well, I don't play it well, so that's kind of the whole point. But, let's take a look. So we have a mission, so we'll click on the new quest, which is actually up here. And if there's another quest currently available, accepting this quest will fail the other. Alright, so the Evux want terraforming specs. And it says, greetings Hydro, my name is Ju... Mialkeol. Sure. I must reluctantly ask for your aid. My people suffer from being extremely ill-suited for our planet, and thus our... Thus far, our technology is insufficient to improve things. We prefer to keep to ourselves, but we find ourselves forced to capture territory or die. We will choose expansion. Or if. Okay. And you don't want that. If you can deliver specs that will help us build a terraformer, our compatibility with this planet will increase by 0.5. This may not sound like much, but it is a major advance to them. So, there we go. And I will accept that quest. So here we are, and apparently we have to run the blockade of, who are these? Are these the, the Andors? So the Andor we don't particularly like anyway. All we have to do is get to that point, the drop zone. We can avoid as many ships as possible, we'll make it easier for us. Once we get into the drop zone, we win the mission. So we're just going to try to run the blockade and avoid everything. So that is pretty much it, and there will be blockades that are actually much, much more challenging. Oh, we weren't supposed to shoot anything. I probably should have turned my free fire off, but whatever. Like I said, I don't really care if the Andorids hate me, but if you can avoid conflict with anything while you're flying around doing this stuff, it's much better. But we successfully jettisoned the technical documents, and we accomplished the mission. So there we go. Our influence with the Evix are now 70 and they were minus 10 before so we gained plus 80 from neutral to trusted and it tells you it took you three seconds of relative time blah 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 all this stuff it's all very important and I'm probably gonna skip over some of the more important things which is not a good idea but you can see you're standing with the current people or your influence I'm minus 102 with the Andors minus 20 minus 19 I'm plus 80 here minus 18, minus 14, minus 12, and minus 17. So most of these people are actually neutral with us right now. Even though they're in the negatives, they're not severely negative, and they don't hate us. So the, the ultimate goal is you want to get as many people as you can, or not. I mean, you can go with only one people at the end and just murder everyone else all the way through. But I think the ideal goal is to get all of these people to eventually love each other, except maybe one or two, which you eliminate through convincing others to go to war for you and you basically build a federation and everybody's happy and it's sweet sweet nice so the mire has been found the andor is the mire's the mire an extremely cursed artifact has been found on the andor homeworld it causes semi debilitating weakness and will be destroyed if the planet ever changes hands hmm. and the ark has been found by the thraxians the ark an extremely powerful artifact has been found on thraxian homeworld it grants them unusual strength, but will be destroyed if the planet ever changes hands. Alright, so, 
first thing we can do, we decide who we want to go buddy up with. Well, we already buddied up a little bit with the the Evux, so I think I'm going to go buddy up with, I want to say the Skylaxians. So we're going to fly over to the Skylaxians, we're going to click there, and we're going to do some friendly acts. The only thing we can do right now is hire Diplomat or deliver spacefaring tech. Well, I want to, to I want to deliver the spacefaring tech, so we're going to do that. And basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove as much of my, sorry, of my my weapons as I can, and we're going to take a look. Where do we have to get to? We have to get to this green spot over here. So we should be able to fly through without a problem now. I want to hold fire at this point. I don't want to shoot at anything. So I'm going to attempt to scoop past everything and just get in there. I should be able to do this relatively safely. We'll see. I'm pretty close to being discovered there, but I managed to get through the blockade pretty easy. And later on, you'll have all seafaring, seafaring, sorry, spacefaring uh, races that are there to prevent you from spreading the spacefaring technology to others. So right now the only ones that are available are the Andors. They're the only ones that are in space. If you bring stuff, you know, if you bring the spacefaring technology to a race, they're going to like you a lot more. Eventually every race will find their way into space. So it's really up to you what you want to do. If you're caught by any of these things, you lower your relationship with the that. The Skylaxians are now spacefaring. They are an advanced species and disapprove of your race's past actions. However, they may just be the key to forming a federation, as their powers of persuasion over the other races are non-trivial. Well, there you go. And she'll randomly pop up and tell you different things, which is quite funny, but sometimes it's funny. Not always. Sometimes it's very useful. So there we go. We are now in the positive with them. Not as much as we are with the uh, Evux, or the Evux, but the Skylaxians are supposed to be very, very useful. And there's different things. You can take a look at the... Oh, let's see, what was it? Well, there's the racial power grid, so you can see not spacefaring all the way across the board except for the two people, the Skylaxians and, of course, the Andors. The Andors are not my favorite people, and it seems that they are the ones that captured me this time as well, so that is a bonus to us. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth on the first episode, but if the game looks kind of interesting to you and you want to see the different things that you can do, definitely check out the future episodes. I'm not going to go too long on this first one. I just want to kind of get you guys familiar with the idea. So I hired a diplomat. We have a certain amount of credits, and the credits we can use for different acts. Right now, I'm going to do one final additional thing here. and I'm going to help destroy a pirate base, and that's going to gain me a thousand credits. So this will also increase my relationship with every other one of the, uh, the races or the factions. So, we're going to do it, but we can't do this because there aren't any pirate bases left at the moment. Alright, well, apparently I can't do that one right now. So, let's see, um, you could do quite a few different things, and I'll show you, like, what I'm, what I'm talking about here. So, let's take a look at them. They are actually doing okay. Their public order is a little bit bad, it's not terrible, but it's a little low, it's minus three. So, we can help with public order. So... Right here, if we assist with the local law enforcement, it will it should tell you here a public order right now is minus three. We will gain 0 0.05 public order, but we can choose for how long we want to do that. And then you can read the stuff. Arkin usually does do pretty funny stuff all throughout. So if you guys are big fans of Arkin games, like I'm a pretty big fan of their games, uh, definitely read through these things if you can. Computer report apparently a recent soccer game, whatever that is, on the planet led to an over-enthusiastic post-game celebration, or maybe the cover was blown on a rigged election, whatever. The situation is still not under control, but if you lend a few months of your time to the local law enforcement, you can help them restore order. So you can actually take time and do that. Hmm. I was under the impression that I had a different way of doing it, but it's okay. So it shows you down here how quickly things are going. So you can fast forward a little bit if you the want. The e are now spacefaring. Oh, the e Extreme e caution is advised. I've made it. They are not aggressive, but are incredibly dangerous when cornered. <laughs> These are the same beings who wiped out most of your population with mysterious technology. Well, that's interesting. So you can always pause, you can fast forward, you can just 1x, speed it, whatever you want to do. 
it's fine, but you can check down here your progress, and the solar date is always constantly moving. So I've increased it by two. I'm going to cancel the dispatch now, and there it goes. It shows us that we are now light. We gained a little bit more love or influence with the Skylaxians. Only by, uh, 0.42, but still, that's something. So 40 sec 42 seconds of relative time, and they're now almost at zero. So the Evox have made it into spacefaring technology. And if you look next to the planet here, there's a time for anyone that isn't already spacefaring. Before they're spacefaring, they get this very simple readout. And once they are spacefaring, you get the much more complex readout of all the different things that are going on at the time. So I think that's going to do it for this first episode, guys. We'll hop in pretty regularly doing a little bit more on The Last Federation. But I wanted to start this up. I've been wanting to do it for a while. I still don't think I'm going to do justice to the game or do it very well. But I'm going to give it my best shot and hope that that's enough that you guys enjoy. So if you did like this, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, share, send off flares, carrier pigeons. I don't know boxes with a little like note tied to its now whatever get the word out guys i'm going to be covering this hopefully for quite some time i should be able to finish it without losing i, I don't i don't know that it's super difficult to lose but i know that winning in a spectacular fashion where you get like multiple people in the federation is going to be a challenge so hopefully i finish without just being terrible completely terrible at the game and if anybody has any tips, hints, or advice that they can give me throughout, I reserve the right not to take them, but I will definitely read it, check it, or read them, check it out, and see what I could or don't want to use. But either way, knowledge is always good, so let me know. Let me know what you guys know, and let me know what you think of this particular LP, and what you think of the game. And I will catch you guys in the very next episode. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums, and I will see you later.